Yeah, I don't recall any of those pumice. Yeah. <coughs> I'm leaning towards much older sandstone from the Swak time, but I'm not ruling out a, a northern continuation of these of these uh, um, mud flows. I've learned a long time ago not to just go, ah, oh, no. Always <laughs> possible. Always worth a look. Oh, you bet. A couple more and then we'll quit. You've been nice to hang around. Yes. On Highway 10, um, the east side of Highway 10, about where the spillway is, the big um, hill that where the landslide was back in 1970. Okay, so we're west of Ellensburg. West, west of Ellensburg okay. on Highway 10. The big slide in 1970. Yes. What, what is the comp is there anything solid? in that structure? <laughs> there is not. <laughs> so this is uh, still back in this, in this, so we're out on Highway 10 now. And in, uh, in 1970, and I, I believe also in 1971, there were a series of landslides off of the high country coming down and wiping out the road and actually diverting the Yakima River just a little bit. And the question is, in that cliff, this is this is uh, Ellensburg side of those white mud flows. Um, the question is, is there anything solid in there? The answer is no. That's a pile of marbles. It's a pile of loose river rock. So it's part of this Ellensburg formation. Is it was it deposited as the river flowed through the valley? Uh, yes and no. Um, the, the rocks were brought in there by rivers, but way way older than the current drainage that we have. So we're talking about bringing river rocks in over the course of uh, three, four million years and just be basically filling the valley like a big sandbox. And then more recently, the river is now cutting down and exposing many of these deposits that it created earlier. And it just so happened that that spot is a place where there's a cut bank and there's, there's decent river erosion at the base of that. And then you throw in us showing up 100 years ago and putting the, the Cascade Canal through there and tunneling through that stuff and bringing water through that scene and it's, it's just uh, it's too much for that slope to deal with. And uh, there's debate about why in 70 there was a slump but if you look there's, there's tens of old slides and there will certainly be more in the future along that stretch. One more, what the heck, yeah. North of Table Mountain, yeah. there's Hannah Canyon. Right. And that area runs east and west. Mm -hmm. And if you go west from the bridge on the creek there, about oh, half a mile or a mile, there's a road that goes north of Pearson Creek. Mm, I don't know it, but go ahead anyway. And if you go up to the end of that road, it's a dead end, about a mile. Uh -huh. There are a whole bunch of white looks like sandstone pillars that are about 12 feet tall that you dig them <coughs> soft and they're little shell, seashells and things that bend uh -huh. in that. Uh -huh. what, what is that from? That is within our Columbia River basalt stratigraphy. So it's back to those images that I showed of basalt lavas with sandstones in between. So you're seeing the entire thickness of one of the sandstone layers that just happens to be at that particular topographic profile where you're not seeing the basalt that were there above it, but you're just seeing an exposed portion of that section of one particular sandstone layer. I can guess that it's the vantage sandstone, which is the most uh, thick and well-developed of the sandstones, but it may not be. Why it has the kind of... Uh, shape that it does, that's hard for me to explain. <coughs> but you're in the 15 million year old collection that's up there. And there's a little bit of glacial activity up high in that drainage. Not much, but a little bit. But it's mostly just that bedrock from that stream. Before we quit, I want to make sure that if you are interested in learning more about the Ice Age floods, which we haven't talked about at all because they did not get into our valley, or you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, my main job is to provide public outreach. I enjoy it, and I do a fair amount of it throughout the calendar year. And if you're really fired up, and you're not busy, Monday through Thursday at 2 o'clock, 
even once a week, uh, I can let you know where this class is happening and there's loads of space. You're more than welcome to join us starting on Monday and, and learn about earthquake and volcano stuff next week in Washington. So email is the best way. So I'm going to leave this right here. And if you want to add your name and your email address, please do so. Otherwise, I'm happy to answer more questions one-on-one -on -one if you want to come on up. So thanks for coming out tonight.